exterior, interior, and the prospect of driving it with all the technical details and also the difference from the base version to the top RS model. All you need to know in full HD, full screen, and full length. Let's go. It is very rare that we can see that a previous concept was basically one-to-one -one carried over to the final model. That's what's happened here. And we can see this single frame grille, but mostly closed because the electric vehicles obviously do not need so much cooling. Still there's like an adaptive cooling in the lower area. And with the top RS model, there are also more carbon fiber accentuations, for example, right here. LED lights would be standard, optional, or standard here for the RS model. You get the matrix LED, elaborated high beam function, and optional, optional. Even optional here for the RS model, here's the laser light, which actually doubles the high beam range. You can see these blue accentuations in, and of course, horizontally drawn, really cool. We'll soon also take a look once again at this lighting effect with the cascading style. And this front hood, we can see very interesting design lines leaping over to the rear of the vehicle. So rather rectangular, very strong design. In the front grille, by the way, you can get different colors, either in vehicle color or in gray, or then here with the black pack in black as well. And then you also get black Audi rings in this black or night package. The length is at four meters 99, 16 foot four or 196 inches. And you get a base model, which is called Audi e-tron GT. And here the RS model, the top model, is called Audi RS e-tron GT. Hmm. I'm not sure why they did that, because when you just say like, you know, GT RS, would have sounded cooler, wouldn't it? Tell me in the comments. Then wheels would start with 19 inch in the base model, 20 inch standard for the RS. These are the optional 21 inch wheels and you get different brakes as well. There's a standard brake, then there's a tungsten carbide brake like we know from Porsche that is a standard then for the RS and optional once again the carbon ceramic brake we can see behind these here and very interesting wheels because the middle part here or these here these are um, some different air blades to make it more aerodynamic. They are not from metal they are from a special plastic compound, really stiff and also resisting the heat. And they are actually even better than for a nice wind flow. Optional carbon fiber package right here for the side mirrors. And then we can see the designer is on part here of the door handle. Interesting design line, once again, evolving here for the strong shoulder area. And then there are a lot of driving dynamics technologies. So this is also then making the price difference between 100,000 euros or dollars for the base model and 140,000 for the RS model. For example, you get the three chamber air suspension, so an option for the base model, standard here for the RS, and also the other technologies like the rear axle steering, 2.8 degrees in the opposite direction in the front wheels up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour optional or once again standard for the RS and also a special adjustable rear differential lock. So a standard differential lock is included already and then you have also a, which, a one which is also you know varying the percentages that is an also again standard for the RS. So you get a lot of extra equipment in the RS also then the bigger wheels and so on and the tungsten carbide brakes that is then making this price difference. But the looks here, what we can see, doesn't really matter. You can get your RS look no matter what. What a bold rear. The light strip goes all over the vehicle, looks really fancy. And the only thing, what I just said, you see 
the RS got the special batch and also then here carbon fiber in the lower part. Other than that, both versions will look pretty much the same. But, well, I mean, impressive appearance. And if you thought, wait a minute, these technology details, didn't Thomas mention this in the recent Porsche Taycan Turbo S review? Yeah, exactly. And the reason is the so-called electric platform J1, Audi e-tron GT and Porsche Taycan, they are shared actually, so they share the technology. Just, of course, the looks, exterior and interior, and some of the details, they are definitely different. More to that when we continue through the review. And by the way, this one here, the e-tron GT, is built in Germany, in Neckarsohn, actually at the same assembly line than the Audi R8, although they are completely different vehicles, they share basically nothing, but still, they implemented that in this line to be like the premium top sports assembly line. And these are the turning indicators, cascading style. And I think in this case, even more impressive, the cascading style here in the front, that looks even fancier. And also here at the side mirror. So probably you just want to use the turning indicators all over the place just to catch some attention. And then there's also a special coming home and leaving home function with a so-called light show. Pretty fancy. It, you know, it's special to the laser matrix LED, but you already get one in the normal matrix LED headlamps. The standard roof would be a look-through panoramic glass roof, a fixed one, as we also know from the Porsche Taycan. This one here, an option, and the carbon fiber roof, or to be precise, CFRP, carbon fiber reinforced plastics. Saves about 12 kilograms of weight. Yeah, who cares when the battery is like, you know, couple of hundred kilograms. So uh, this is a very heavy car, but we already know that the low center of gravity makes it very, very sporty, although it's heavy. So what about the battery and recharging? There's one battery size, 86 kilowatt hours net or 93 kilowatt hours gross. And here AC charging 11 kilowatts standard, 22 kilowatt option. I think they should have made it standard. And DC charging up to 270 kilowatt. That's of course massive. And the promised range is 488 kilometers or 300 miles. However, if you think about the Porsche Taycan and our experience, there we usually had some 300 to 400 kilometers, so 200 miles plus, depending on temperature and use case. And depending if you have the e-tron GT Quattro or the RS e-tron GT, either a horsepower peak of 530 horsepower or of almost 650 horsepower. Acceleration figures are then are 4.1 seconds or 3.3 seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And you can compare these power figures to a Taycan 4S and a Taycan Turbo. Top speed is 250 kilometers an hour or 155 miles per hour. And on the driver's side, you have another AC charger. In the UK vehicle, it would be the other way around. And it's actually quite cool because this second charger on the other side is actually standard. Here also then with the RS logo if you have the RS version. Door handles, good quality and then frameless design of course. You can have also insulation glass for the side windows by the way, which is also here, see this double layer. So for the side windows and for the rear window that's an option. For the front window it's standard with the insulation. Then door closing sound, actually quite nice considering it's frameless. Then inside of the doors, everything wrapped tightly from design, microfiber inserts right here. Then also good quality and styling from the inside door handle. Galvanized tops here for the window levers, which have nice clicking sounds, pretty slim door pocket. Each one GT batch for the paddle light. See here, <laughs> that's cool, right? And then also the RS entry batch, if you have the RS version. Steering wheel, 
in this case also with the RS badge, flat bottom, perforated sides, but this steering wheel is also available with microfiber, which of course is better for the grip handle and so on, and also then NL3. And talking about that, there are two different seat forms available. Either a normal sport seat, already with integrated head restraint, and this one here is the Sport Seat Plus, with a little bit more shoulder form in the area, and First time now in a premium Audi, we get an animal-free interior, not this one. They showcase the animal skin here once again, because they're not very consistent in their presentation. But however, it is available with either a fabric on the middle part and then leatherette on the outside, or with Dynamica microfiber on the middle part and leatherette on the outside. So there's a special design package available, both for the standard seat and also here for the Sport Seat Plus, so you can get it animal free now if you want, but it's not standard. That's of course the reason why people still buy Tesla, because Tesla is consistent in their sustainability approach and Audi is not yet, but definitely a big step forward that you can get it now. Seating position, this is really tight kind of like, you feel that, and also when you control the steering wheel up and down, or in and out. This is, um, you know, like the lower part, this clip, I would call it. This is the mechanism that Porsche is using and Audi usually does not. So definitely here for the first time, you feel that this is basically an Audi Porsche, which is not necessarily a bad thing, you know? So you can really think like, which exterior and interior design do you like better? The one of the Porsche or the one of the Audi? And then you can decide for yourself. Seating position, of course, really sports car alike, but yeah, I mean, it is GT style, Gran Turismo style, because it's not like that you would feel cramped in. We have enough space to move around with one with a six or six with one. You still get enough headroom like this. And again, good steering wheel position, nice handling, and it tells you just, come on, start driving. Carbon fiber applications, we can also see in the interior and really in excellent build quality as we're used to from Audi. And the user interface is actually still quite straightforward for such an, you know, electric and also, um, you know, um, elaborated vehicle. Soon more about that. And by the way, if you have the animal-free option, it's not only better for the animals, also better for the environment because then the seed would be made from 119 PET bottles recycling. So the whole recycling share of the seed then, of the sustainable seed, is about 85%. And then here, the floor mats and the material below that, this would be even better because this is then 100% recycling share, also made from old fisher nets and so on. So they're trying to make it full circle if you go then for the more sustainable option or design package. And even the production in Negazon, by, by the way, is CO2 neutral. How do they do that? They get the power from renewable energies directly at the plant. And what they cannot you know, do, like, you know, even outright with that, they also buy the CO2 certificates where then maybe like some forestation projects and so on to make it then balanced out. Interior overview. Also very spectacular and yeah, reminds us really a little bit of you know, spaceship alike. Nice illumination here with the e-tron badge and then the ambient lighting right there and also towards the inset of the doors. That's really lovely, of course, different colors are available. Carbon fiber here for the RS interior. We have a 10.1 inch touchscreen right here and two more leads for that. And 12.3 inch digital instruments right there. Different stylings, also, you know, different views available. Nice shifting pedals here too. And you can change something with the recuperation, for example. And take a look at the steering wheel. Heated steering wheel is available. Easy volume control at the steering wheel. Left side, you control the digital instrument and the view and so on. Now, there you could already see some, you know, recuperation modes being adapted. Then towards the middle part here, and this is like, thank God they did that. Easy climate unit. This is also different to the Porsche Taycan. For the user interface, I would definitely prefer the Audi. Easier to put in the temperature and nice clicking sounds, seat heating and so on. Because in the Taycan you have a separate screen and it's like, uh, that's bollocks to change temperature. Here, really nicely done. Audi Drive Select is then here. When you have the air suspension, it um, raises or 
goes down depending on the speed, for example, or if you are in a special efficiency mode, it uh, is like maximum 140 kilometers an hour and lowers the vehicle to be more wind efficient as well. And then further down with a red start stop button and this drive mode selector goes like this. You put it back for the drive mode, R in reverse or P right there. And you also have an electric sound and appearing, especially in dynamic mode, both outside and inside. Further down, we have this volume slider for the co-driver and then adaptive cup holders too. This is also more handy than in the Taycan, I think. And then there's this very small cubby hole for the smartphone, two USB-C chargers, and then there's an inductive charging pad for your phone, but you really have to put your phone right in there, like, uh, hmm, not sure what you thought of that. You have to squeeze your phone in there. Well, and then it maybe also makes sense that you can then also use your Apple CarPlay and your Auto at least wirelessly. More details to the screen, rear view camera, greater resolution. And you also have this 3D view. Yay. That looks fancy, right? Ooh. Oh, here you can also see how the car looks like when you have the grill in vehicle color. So this is not that at this vehicle. You know, we also have different wheels, so they don't adapt the visualization to the wheels. This is also not the RS. <laughs> we can really live with that. So this is then when it's not the RS model. Uh, yeah, definitely very interesting to see. GPS looks like this, typical Audi style. This is the, you know, the range we have at the moment. This car is not fully charged, um, but you know, that would be like the promised range. See this, you know, proximity outline. And uh, then we have the main menu like this, and it's really straightforward. So it's easy to use, um, easy menu structure. You can also individualize that if you like. Car settings here um, would be Drive select is definitely very interesting. And once again, dynamic mode gives you this EV sound, which sounds a little bit combustion engine like also. And then you can go to the Apple CarPlay and add auto. It's a nice integration right there. And we have here the 16 speaker B&O sound system, which is yeah, really good as for the 3D surround. Really beautiful. Audi virtual cockpit, 12.3 inch, and you can change the views, have the map all over the place like this. Um, or you can also you know, individualize what you want to see right here. So this is all possible like this. Of course, not the real consumption figure at the moment is a show vehicle, and this hasn't been properly driven on the road, but there you can see you know, how you can browse through this. And once again, the user interface definitely easier and better than in the Porsche Taycan. That's actually very well done. And the head-up display, do not take a look at these water bottles and other production equipment stuff here in the photo studio. Just take a look at the head-up display <laughs> with the current speed and awesome assistance systems, information and so on. Always a good option. Then, rear doors. Same design styling, also nice with the microfiber inserts and you see they are there are not any gaps left or something, so a perfect build quality, even though this is here, yeah, one of the very early vehicles. You can see here in this foot area, they use so-called foot garages, the same way as Porsche does, what they, they do there. So the battery is placed in the bottom, but there where you have the, you know, your feet for the rear passengers, they left some space that you can really put your feet there and don't get any problems. There is this some kind of single seat design but there is an emergency middle seat, so you can drive with three people in the rear, but of course not the most comfortable one. It's more thought out to be that you have two people in the back. The question is, does it also fit for tall adults? You know, we have a long wheelbase of about two meters 90, and together with the foot garages, that, that indeed you know, makes it possible that also tall people can get in the rear. Headroom-wise, I mean, no one would probably put up the spine all the way, then I would hit the ceiling here, but when I leave my spine relaxed like this, I exactly fit in like this. It's also the same as in the Porsche Taycan. And it's actually quite um, sporty and cozy also in the rear area because you have the single seat design, as I, as I just said. So 
yeah, surely works that way. You can already fold the seats from here. That is possible then. And then you have this, this middle area here for the armrest. There we go. <laughs> Adaptive cup holders, and there you can also see the perfection, uh, perfect, no. perfection in execution. Perfection. Ah, it's a new word. Hmm. Maybe she'll remember that for the <laughs> next car reviews. Well, and here the middle seat, I mean, there is this middle tunnel, um, climate unit and so on, but sitting in the middle seat here, yeah, I would really say for emergency situations where you need to transport three people, but not the coziest experience in the middle part, but it's also not the main focus of this vehicle. Well, since this vehicle has some kind of a spaceship atmosphere, I'll use my white lightsaber to check out the trunk. 405 liters in the capacity and the length is just over a meter. The width in the more narrow part is a little bit more than 80 centimeters and you just have more width right here. And short height here, yeah, 45 centimeters. I can put a backpack in here and you see, you do get a problem when you have it like, you know, pretty much in the front. This way, I think it will not close. Let's see. No, it doesn't. So we have to put it more to the rear like this, and then it should actually work. Yeah, and the same we also had in the Taycan. So you see, it's not a fast back atmosphere. That's why they also will do the, the Taycan Cross Turismo, that you have a more practical opening. But here they went for a more, you know, shallow normal sedan trunk experience and there's one more cubby hole right here you could uh, a little bit shallow for charging the cable um, maybe for some other things charging cables better in the front in the Taycan you can open the trunk with the key here they have pressing twice for the normal trunk to open the front so the front trunk here at the inside of the door so you get out of the vehicle and then you have the button right here to unlock the trunk. And then here in the front, we have another 81 liters. So you can use it for some storage, but of course, it would be handy to put the charging cables in there. And now to our conclusion for today with the all new Audi e-tron GT. Well, I think we can all agree that they stayed with the concept look, the concept car look really paid off. It's an awesome design, so sporty, so bold and really makes this transition from a classic supercar to an electric supercar, I think, pretty easy. When you think about the comparison to an Audi A7, by the way, this one here is a little bit wider, a little bit flatter, but it has almost the same dimensions. It's, you know, like with Porsche, a little bit the question of like Panamera versus Taycan, here A7 versus the e-tron GT. And I can tell you that driving fun-wise, this will be basically the same like we know from the Porsche Taycan because they share the same platform. So it will be definitely, I can really promise you, a great driving experience, low center of gravity, 50-50 weight distribution, and of course, really powerful as for the drivetrain, one electric motor in the front, one electric motor in the rear, the rear one then with a two-speed transmission. Again, exterior, more rectangular look if you compare it to, for example, to the Taycan. Interior also with a high build quality and also reasonable space inside. Finally, there's also an animal free version available. Just a little bit of pity that they didn't make it standard, just an option or a you know, design choice to go for. But Porsche did, did actually the very same. So that is hopefully then the next step to make it also the standard choice. Overall, very interesting to see it right now here in the final version. Really looking forward to drive it for you, together with you. So far, there will be the comparable version like the Taycan 4S and the Taycan Turbo here with the e-tron GT Quattro and the RS e-tron GT. If there will be more versions, hmm, a more powerful version, probably not. But I think we can also calculate with a rear wheel driven only entry version at some point. Then again, at the moment, about 100K in the entry price, 140K for the RS model. So there might be some cheaper version available at the later stage. But so far, of course, we'll keep you updated when we have the driving review ready. Looking now forward to your feedback, 
the Audi e-tron GT. And since they are somewhat similar, would you go for the Porsche Taycan? Also tune into the review of this one, of course. Or would you go for the Audi e-tron GT? And tell us why. See you in the comments. See you next time.